Hello, me again. I find myself with another 30 minutes of spare time in my evening in between dropping one child off at something and picking another one up from something else. So I thought I'd use this time to test another Ubuntu ISO. Um, I did this earlier on with Ubuntu Mate uh, on the trusty ThinkPad X220 and it installed successfully. But there's other flavors I can try we go back to my little document with a list of the various flavors you can see that uh, in a previous video I looked at Ubuntu Studio and did a bit of a noodling around a voyage of discovery for Ubuntu Studio and then earlier on today I looked at uh, Ubuntu Mate at lunchtime uh, so we've got a few left and using the super special random number generator we can pick one of those and then I can copy that ISO image to a USB key. Now some people have voiced skepticism about the uh, random number generator that I use that it just so happened to pick number four which was Ubuntu Mate that I had just written onto a USB key. Uh, it's good to be skeptical about these kind of things but on this occasion it was just blind luck you know random numbers and everything. So let's run the random number thing again, and we've got one, which was one. One is Lubuntu. Okay, so let's find the Lubuntu CD. Actually, we'll use, uh, sometimes I use DD Rescue, and people have asked in the comments why I use DD Rescue. I'll address that in a minute. Let's start the image going. Uh, if I use disks, which I only recently discovered, and write to USB keys as well. So I'm going to unmount all the partitions on this USB key and then under the little kebab menu we go to restore disk image asks you where's the image and I should find under my ISOs folder we chose Lubuntu daily live and I've got one from a few days ago and one from yesterday so that's the most recent one I have there may be a more recent one but it's good enough testing the one from yesterday there may be known issues. Uh, so yeah, just checking that the image size is 1.8 gig and it's going to write to my uh, Kingston Data Traveler USB stick. So start restoring. Going to wipe that drive. Yes, do it. I need to type in my password. So this is quite handy. I quite like this way of writing... Uh, USB disks, ISO images onto USB disks. I like it for a number of reasons. One, um, it's built in. This disk utility is is built into my Ubuntu machine. Uh, another reason why I like it is because it's graphical and I don't have to remember arcane command line options. So you might like it as well. The DD Rescue command line, I've committed to memory because I've typed it so many times. But still, it's easy to make a mistake in the command line and choose SDB instead of SDC and accidentally overwrite a drive that you didn't mean to instead of writing to USB stick. And with this graphical interface, it's pretty clear that that's a thumb drive because it says so right there on the screen. Um, and the other way, the other reason I like DD Rescue, which I also like this, is it gives you a progress meter that shows not only throughput so it's showing me 4.6 megabytes a second uh, it's also showing me progress of how far it's got to the goal but also gives me some idea of how long i've got to sit here and waffle uh, before uh, it's going to be written uh, so i've got four minutes of waffle uh, what can we do in four minutes well we could go and have a look at the iso tracker and refresh this screen. I am logged in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just log in with your Ubuntu SSO account. Um, and we're looking at Focal Daily because this is Focal Fossa. And we're aiming towards 2004. And if I scroll down here, we should be able to find Lubuntu somewhere. Somewhere, 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 somewhere. somewhere. Uh, am I not? Have I, I've, I've almost certainly just sailed straight past it chillin mate base what where is it oh there it is oh there's upgrades 
Where's the install of Ubuntu? Everyone's probably shouting at the screen. You've just gone past it. No, but there it is, right at the top. Didn't you all see that? Come on. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Lubuntu Desktop has uh, two sets of tests. One which is install using Calamari's and wipe the entire disk. And the other one is to boot the live session. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes, so let's go back to the disk utility. Yeah, we've got three minutes, so we can have a look at these and see what is involved in these test cases. Uh, it looks like they've passed recently. Some people have actually run these tests. That's good, and there is a bug. Uh, graphical bug there that's already been reported. That's good. Well, you know, it's not good, but it's um, good that someone's reported it. Right, so let's open these up. So this one is boot up the Ubuntu. Uh, oh, <laughs> this is not up to date. When Ubiquity starts, surely it's Calamari, it's not Ubiquity. Uh, press try Ubuntu and wait for the live session. So this is all about booting into the live session. Execute the default applications. Well, we did this with Ubuntu Studio the other day, and uh, that was. I guess relatively time consuming for a couple of reasons. Uh, one was there are a lot of applications shipped on Ubuntu Studio that I was unfamiliar with. The next time I come to do that, I'll be a lot faster because I'll recognize how to use the Jack control utility and I'll know exactly what to expect in LMMS and, and so on and so on. And you get faster and faster at doing these things at knowing what the expectations are for each application. So that will get faster. I think Lubuntu ships with fewer applications by default, so it will be faster for me to do this test as well. Uh, and it looks like some other people have already done this, and uh, they also tested a few specific things, like tested printing, which is uh, a useful thing to test. So that's all super. That's good to see. But I'm not going to do the live session one. I'm actually going to do the erase disk and install. And it says install using calamaris and uh, wipe the disk, erase. So it's a very short set of tests, which I should be able to fit in in the 30 minutes or so that I've got set aside for doing these tests. And I think that's the key thing about testing these ISO images is get a slot of time. And as a friend of mine used to say, time box it. Set aside a specific amount of time. It doesn't have to take all day. It doesn't have to take all afternoon even. You can just do one when you have half an hour to spare. And so I think this is the one that I'm going to do. So we've got less than a minute left. It's going to finish off writing this to disk. And then what I'll do is boot the old trusty ThinkPad, uh, which has currently uh, got Ubuntu Mate Focal Fossa installed. This is the one that I installed at lunchtime today. So what I'll do is I'll just shut this down right now. And while that's shutting down, we'll go back to the other machine, which is writing the USB key. Looks like it's very nearly finished. <laughs> okay, so it's in the high 90%. Do leave a comment if, if you've got any questions. I do keep an eye on the comments uh, on this channel and uh, I've had some great suggestions for from people uh, for things to do in the future. I did create a vote in the community tab. I mentioned this at lunchtime today. I, I created a vote in the community tab to get people's suggestions on what to do next. Feel free to leave a comment because this is new for me. I've only been making videos like this for about a week. And so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm just turning the camera on and recording stuff. So um, that's done. So yeah, leave comments, let me know uh, what you need me to do. And I will now turn off that USB key. I've got one of these fancy hubs that has a switch so you can turn off devices, which is quite handy. Why is that handy? Because sometimes USB devices need to be reset and it's much less wear and tear on the port if you just turn the thing off than if you yank the thing out and plug it back in again. Okay, so let's switch back to trusty Mr. ThinkPad. 
gendering my laptops now. It's a, a ThinkPad X220. I talk about this laptop all the time. I'm considering getting an X230 uh, because X230s are just as awesome as these. I didn't actually need to press the uh, the Think the blue ThinkPad button because I've actually set in the BIOS. I've actually set USB. Look, I'll show you. Uh, in startup, I've actually set the boot order to have the USB drive first. So to speed up the the whole process of me testing these ISOs out, I actually <laughs> have it set that if there's a USB drive in there, it will boot off of that. Now that might be annoying um, for some people because you know sometimes you reboot your computer and you leave a USB disk, USB stick in the drive, and it might fail to boot because you know whatever reason. But I I leave it in there. Um, as the default okay so in theory uh, according to the test case let's go back to the test case it says boot up the image let me make this bigger there we go boot up the image and select your language uh, system boots properly oh select your language okay well I think the default is English I could also press F3 and change my keyboard layout because U USA is the default keyboard layout and I actually have a UK keyboard unsurprisingly uh, so F3 allows you to change the key map so let's do start Lubuntu and hopefully it will boot with English language and UK keyboard layout and then once it boots I don't need to show the test cases on screen because they're pretty straightforward and you can look them up yourself you just go to iso.qa.ubuntu.com, uh, click on Focal, and look at the test case for Lubuntu. You'll find pretty straightforward. There's only nine or so steps. So all I'm going to do is boot up, do the installer, choose pretty much the default options for everything. Uh, I'm going to use the erase disk, because I'm going to wipe out this uh, Ubuntu Mate install and uh, install over the top one comment that i have had a few times um well there's a couple of comments related to this one is do not worry about wearing out your ssds because these constantly writing over the top of these your ssds could reduce their lifespan i haven't actually had that many ssds fail um and this isn't a production laptop so if it did fail then so be it it's a part that wore out over time as a result of me using it quite a lot but no I don't really worry too much about the SSD wearing out and the other question I often get is uh, how much swap space do I configure and again this is just a test machine so I'm using whatever the defaults are but I typically set swap space even on an SSD to have some swap I almost never have machines configured to have zero swap I've had bad experiences in the past with um, systems that have zero swap. Now, this has booted to the LXQt desktop environment successfully. It's kind of weirdly stretched the wallpaper across both screens um, because uh, if I just drag this icon, you'll see. There you go. I've got a dual screen set up here. Now, do they have my usual test is does Super P work? No, there's no Super P implementation here. So I'm going to have to fly blind slightly and find the display settings. I don't know where they are. Desktop, is that where it is? Desktop settings. So I've currently got this on my screen. Um. But that doesn't look like the thing. So this is another one of those. Once you get used to it, once you figure out how to do it, you'll know. So this shows I don't know how to operate LXDE. Where is the display thing? Preferences. I thought it would be under preferences, but it's not. Um, System tools. Can't see it in there. There's nothing that says display which is uh, is there a, is a Lubuntu LXQt settings why 
Let me look in the configuration center. What have we got in here? Desktop notifications, desktop. Monitor settings, there we go. That's the one I need. And so I want to put this one, enable that display and enable that display. And where, how do I say I want the same thing on both of them? Advanced thing? How do I do this? Huh. Screen extends to another display. This is my primary display. How do I make the same thing up here? Let me just move that back to my display so I can see it. Enable this display. Fast menu. Fast options. Ah, there we go. This is what we need. So I should have seen in fast menu there are these fast options. So we want to have unified view, I think. Let's see what that does. Perfect. That's what we need. So now I know that. I'll do that in the future. So let's close that and close that. So we've all learned something today. <laughs> so the way I found that was under here. Uh, and execute settings. I found it in and execute configuration center and it was called monitors. Ah, oh, there it is right there. Okay. So now I know that's where I will go in future. Okay. So let's start the actual test. Uh, start installing Ubuntu. Lubuntu, sorry. Now you see, interesting. Ah, it was American English, wasn't it? Language. But the keyboard layout I put as British English, so I'm going to change this to British English. Welcome to the Lubuntu installer. That's pretty much ask some questions and set up Lubuntu on your computer. Nice. The next universe. Ooh. Okay, it's correctly detected my time zone. It's set British English, because that's what I chose on the boot menu. Hit next. Oh, that's nice. Shows you the keyboard layout. So I should be able to test all my usual keys. Yep, they work. Hit next. Now we get to the partitioning and there's my SSD. And uh, what do I want to do? I want to erase the disk. Okay, so currently has that on it and we're going to wipe it out. And the bootloader location is going to go on that SSD. I don't think there's many other places it can go, but it's going to go in the boot record of that SSD. Obviously, I could choose all the of these other options, and it would be a good idea for me to go through this whole process again and test these others. But for now, I'm going to do the test case that's requested. So next, I put in my name. And we know the name of this machine is Deep Thought. Excellent. Next. So it gives me a summary. There's an overall overview of what will happen once you start the install procedure. Time zone Europe London. Language will be British English. Numbers and dates locale will be British English. Keyboard is a generic keyboard. English UK. I'm going to wipe that and put that on there. Create a new partition table. Wipe the disk. Use ext4 by default. Go. Out to make changes to your disk in order to install you will not be able to undo these changes okay fair enough looking good so far so i can take you back to the uh the test case so i got as far as here enter details confirm the details and then the slideshow should display correctly and then it should ask you the installation is not a menu should ask you to confirm your settings. Oh, interesting. Allow the machine to reboot and it should reboot into Ubuntu, showing the username you entered. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's see if that is the case. Tweak it using the configuration center. <laughs> Food. What is that? Is that some kind of dried onion or something? Uh, so the VLC in the background. Do they ship VLC by default? Interesting. And Firefox to surf the web. So does this not have a details thing? Uh, LibreOffice, if you want to do your presentations. Uh, interesting, you, there's no window controls on this. It's just a full screen. I mean, you can obviously switch desktop and uh, 
get on with doing something else while the installation is uh, is going on. Yes, the wallpaper still says 1910. Often the wallpapers don't change until the very last <laughs> last minute almost. Um, there was a thread on the uh, Ubuntu discourse recently where uh, Martin Wimpress posted the new design from the uh, design team for the desktop wallpaper, including the new mascot, the um, Focal Fossa mascot. And uh, yeah, he's had some feedback on that and some people have remixed it because I think he put an SVG uh, on there, which we got from the design team. And uh, the goal of that was just to let people create remixes of the the wallpaper so that the the flavors such as Lubuntu could, if they want to, uh, use that in their wallpaper if they want to. It's entirely up to them. This is the they are the masters of their own destiny with their own flavor. Filling up file systems. <laughs> okay. Is that really the phrase? I mean, hmm. so there's. <laughs> I'm not sure if filling up file systems is what I want to be told when I'm doing an install. Like, you know, copying files, installing packages, those kind of things. But I don't want someone filling up my file system. Uh, that's, a, that's a bad thing, isn't it? We shall see. It's funny, when uh, nerds make software, and they put uh you know cheeky phrases in there or stuff that's very nerdy and uh geeky i'm not saying that's the case here but it's often the case so the key thing about uh lubuntu is it's quite lightweight and lean it's quite good for low spec machines like this machine is how old 2011 i think this uh, laptop was made so it could really um fly with something relatively lightweight i know they don't necessarily sell the ubuntu as lightweight it's not necessarily meant to be something for really old and crusty computers and i certainly wouldn't say this x220 was old and crusty it's well loved and uh, a nice vintage uh, laptop so we're installing packages oh looks like we must be near the end there we go Ubuntu has been installed on your computer. You may now restart to into your new system or continue using the Ubuntu live environment. Sweet. The end of our test. Look at that. Five to eight. Perfect. So at some point I should be told to remove the USB. Yes. Remove the installation medium and press enter. Now I had this with uh, Mate where it didn't actually shut down, but um, Lubuntu has. So that's now rebooting. And I've pulled the USB key out because if I didn't, it would boot into the live environment. And hopefully this is going to boot into Lubuntu. Screen flicker and then Lubuntu. Lovely. As long as my username appears, then that's the test complete. And I will go back to the ISO tracker and mark it as a past test. That's all I had to do. There we go. Job done. My test is complete. Now, that's annoying. <laughs> I specifically said I wanted UK layout. Does it? I, I, this is one of those ones that changes when, when the person logs in, or does it? I think this is the. Yeah, there we go. As soon as I start typing my password, that gets me every time. That got me in 1910. Um, did I type my password incorrectly there? Yes, I did. This is not part of the test, but. It's been successful. So let me just go back to where we discovered we could uh, do the um, monitors. It was in LXQ settings, monitor settings, and the fast option was unified view. And uh, I say, yes, I want to keep that. Oh, okay. There are upgrades. No, I, I, I don't want to do those just yet. I'll do those later. So that's a successful test. I've installed Ubuntu. I could at this point start noodling around and playing with all these applications, but that wasn't actually part of the set of tests that I was supposed to do. Uh, and as I have a limited amount of time, I'm now done. So all I need to do is down here, it says, does the system boot properly? Load Lubuntu, showing the username you created. Yes, it did. So I say passed. I didn't see any critical bugs. 
So called whoops, I can't type because it's dark. Called on ThinkPad X220 i7 16 gig of RAM uh, and then an SSD. All worked great. Submit result. Boom. That's how easy it is to do a bit of testing and share your results with the QA team. Now I can have some fun playing with Lubuntu and learning how to use it. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, do feel free to share this with your friends and introduce them to the joy that is testing Ubuntu flavor ISO images. I'll be back another time with one of the other remaining flavors that I have left to test. Now that I've done Ubuntu, we've still got Kubuntu, sorry, I've done Lubuntu, Ubuntu Studio and Ubuntu Mate. We've still got Kubuntu, Budgie, Chillin and Zubuntu left to do. But there's always time to test all of them. So if any of you would like to get involved, uh, jump on the ISO tracker. Just go to iso.qa.ubuntu.com, log in with your Ubuntu SSO account, and download an ISO and get testing. Pretty easy, and it's a fairly low impact way to get contributing to an open source project that provides you with software for free. So it's, uh, it's the right thing to do, I think. So again, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next one of these.